Hi, I'm DC Techie. I'm working in an HPC data center as a systems and network administrator. And this is my work-issued laptop, Lenovo E495. It has been running Arch Linux for the past two or almost three years. Let's talk about my setup. So, how did I even arrive at Arch? I've been using Linux for work for well over six years and I came up with this simple rule. Use the system you're working with. My previous workplaces used a lot of Debian, one developed software that was running on Debian. I've had a lot of Debian to manage. So I used Debian on my laptop. It was a win-win. A lot of things I could look up on my own system, try out software, resolve package dependencies, you know, test and learn on somewhere that's not production. Server administration is a bit different than software development, and I think this is one such example where living with a system, breaking and fixing it is really important. I think I used MATE desktop environment because it was the environment we also used on our deployments, but then I saw a colleague using i3. i3 is a tiling window manager. It divides your monitor into multiple workspaces and by default, windows are maximized or share space equally. I really like the idea of having dedicated screen devoted to browser, other for work chat, etc. Debian had a fairly good support of i3, so I installed it and started using it. Learning was a process, so I switched between i3 and mate a lot. I let you in on a little secret. The distros, they don't matter. Or rather, they do, but not for the reasons you might be thinking about. For me, when I see a distro, I want to know what release cycle and support does it have? And what package manager or package format does it use? Is it DEB, RPM or something else? You might be surprised, but that's pretty much it. So when I switched jobs and got a new laptop, I just installed plain Ubuntu. But I really didn't like the default interface. It was slow, it used too many resources and I tried to switch to Sway. Uh, and Sway is basically an i3, but it uses Wayland instead of the X system. But I encountered a lot of problems. I had to either backport or compile a lot of packages for Sway to work. And I don't remember whether it was Ubuntu 18 or 20, but the point is I had problems due to real cycle falling behind with some crucial packages. Also, around that time, I had a chat with a colleague about laptop security, and I realized I don't really have mine that well secured. What I really wanted to do was to understand the security aspect, and that's hard if your distro installer consists of three radio buttons and ten buttons labeled next. I talked with other people at work and gave Arch Linux a try, and I know, it's amazing to have like people at work that you can hold a conversation about Arch Linux and distros, uh, and it was actually the rolling release model that enticed me the most. The rest of the story is pretty simple. One of the most watched videos on my channel is about doing a secure installation of Arch with secure boot and unified kernel image. It's still relevant, so give it a watch if you're interested. Now you know how I arrived at Arch. I'm using it with Sway Windows Manager and it's been pretty good. I don't have a login manager. I log on via TTI and start Sway manually. This way, if I'm in a pinch, I can ditch the graphical interface and save some battery life. I also don't have LibreOffice installed. In an environment where everyone uses Microsoft Office, I cannot reliably use LibreOffice. My main issue with it is that often a docx document I open with Libre takes up two pages, while in Word it fits on one. I know it's Word being a dick, because the same thing happens when I open the document on Google Docs, but I just cannot trust it and I would rather RDP to our Windows server and use Office installed there. LibreOffice isn't inherently bad or lacking, but my god, multiple people working at once on a document or presentation or a spreadsheet is just so good on Google Documents. I don't use file browser or file manager, whatever you call it. ls-al with additional grep is good enough for me. 90% of stuff lives in my downloads directory anyway. I do have nnn installed, but I use it like twice a year. For Wi-Fi, I'm using iwd. It's a fully command line based tool and it has built-in DHCP client. It works only for Wi-Fi though, the DHCP client. For cable connections, I have additional DHCPD installed. Some would say it's a barren setup, but hey, it gets the job done. 
Connecting to Zoom or Google Meet works, sharing your screen via browser used to be an issue, but I'm pretty sure it's now functional. I know for sure that OBS screen capture works though. Oh, you're asking me about my IDE. 99% of the time Vim does the job. When I really need to dig into some big project, I do have code installed, but because most of the time I cannot be bothered to connect a mouse, everything is just faster in Vim. And while we're here, a little note about my terminal. I'm using just plain bash. I'm not a fan of ZSH or whatever's the fad these days. Almost everything has bash and everything has traditional born shell. Personally, I find it tiresome to hop from your highly customized shell of Vim to a server that has none of that. What things do I find lacking in this setup? There are some I find irritating but can do nothing about them or I just can't be bothered to actually put some effort. First of all, Bluetooth managed fully via CLI sucks. I manage everything via Bluetooth CTL and it only shows me physical addresses there. Since that information is nowhere to be found on most Bluetooth devices, headsets, etc., pairing new devices is always annoying. I guess XDGMIME needs to be configured by hand and without it lots of stuff won't open or just, you know, by clicking it after you download it via browser. It can be annoying if you have, let's say, Zoom client installed locally but Firefox cannot properly reach it after clicking the meeting URL. I can also imagine having to connect to some weird Palo Alto 40k or other proprietary VPN difficult and if not impossible. That would probably require a VM with Windows because I very rarely see uh, Linux clients for those VPNs. I know I know Strong Swan exists, but that's not a guarantee of your success. I honestly thought that there would be more points, but my only other thought is that no matter how light your system is, internet browsers have become such a big behemoth that they are the biggest reason for your battery to drain. It doesn't matter whether you use Chrome or Firefox, web pages are just big web applications that hog resources. I guess my point is that I don't like what web browsers have become, or the web in general. I'll save my rant about the current state of the web for some other time though. <music> Lastly, I think this might be the most interesting thing for some. Let me do a quick overview of how I actually use the Arch for work. First of all, lots of SSH and CLI stuff. I connect to VMs, servers and network devices. It's a mix of provisioning new software running, unstable playbooks or salt pillars. I also edit scripts and templates. Very often I need to remote somewhere and check logs using grep or awk. Ersync this, scp that, you know, check dmask and so on. There is also the boring aspect of the job. Write documents, prepare hardware specs, update documentation. Here I use mostly Google Docs with web browser in general. Truth to be told, the laptop is nothing but a glorified terminal. Occasionally you write some text or code locally, run a docker container or two, but at the end of the day it's a gateway to bigger resources and other servers. As you can see, it's not that Arch is crucial for any of this. Disappointing, I know. So if I were to choose, would I go with Arch Linux and this setup again? Yeah, definitely. I really like the rolling release model and having a recent kernel that supports I think all of the CPU features I have. Doing the Arch install by hand allowed me to configure a really light system. It also allowed me to better understand how the system works and what hooks do and so on. Again, I lament that no matter how light your setup is, web browsers will probably be your heaviest lifters. Also, excuse me for my lack of more in-depth technical content. I'm working on it, as you can clearly see here. It just takes a lot of time. To be honest, I'm amazed how other creators come up with it so quickly. So if you are still here, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!